So it's a pleasure to be here and to represent Frontiers. Um, this is really the first uh, year that we've actually gotten out and started spreading the word about ourselves. We've spent the last few uh, sort of debugging our publishing model and uh, trying to find solutions to some of the problems we encountered uh, as we grew. And we've grown quite a bit uh, since we launched. Uh, we came online in 2008. Uh, was, the company was founded in 2007 by working academics with full-time academic positions. Uh, the reason we were founded in Switzerland, in Lausanne, uh, is because a significant number of our founding editors are from the Ecole Polytechnique in uh, Lausanne and in Zurich. Um, and the, we started accepting manuscripts on January 1st, of 2008. We're a very small team, um, surprisingly small given the number of manuscripts that we handle. Um, and none of us is, has any experience in uh, publishing. So we sort of learned as we went. Um, and brought in a few people with publishing experience uh, to help us along the way, but even the managing editors were largely people who were recent graduates from uh, scientific careers. We're largely grassroots. Um, we're still run by scientists uh, who are working scientists and primarily for scientists, so we constantly are reminding ourselves that our mission is to serve the scientists who are on our editorial boards and our authors. And we're publishing open access uh, under CCBY um, NC, <laughs> uh, which as I understand there are some opinions about, so we're going to consult with our authors and editors and see what we can do about that. Um, in 2008 we came online with Frontiers in Neuroscience. Uh, our founders were neuroscientists, I'm a neuroscientist by training, uh, and for the first two years we published exclusively in the, the domain of neuroscience. In 2010 we expanded into psychiatry and psychology. And then in, uh, toward 2011, um, we, pu we expanded into a number of different fields, including neurology, physiology, pharmacology, and so on. Uh, and last year, we launched oncology, so we're moving uh, significantly into medical publishing as well. Uh, and we're continuing to grow and launch new fields. We have 12 field journals now. Two more are coming online shortly. So we're largely a life science publisher, but that's not for long. And our philosophy is a little bit different from uh, traditional publishers in that um, not unlike PLOS One on the first point, um, our peer review is uh, scientifically based on technical merit and as objective a fact, uh, an analysis as possible. So objective factors take priority in peer review. Um, sorry about the formatting of this. This ended up slightly different on here. Uh, when we say equal opportunity, uh, we move, we're trying to move beyond gold open access and provide fee waivers, at least partial fee waivers or full fee waivers for authors from poorer countries. Um, and that's on the basis of GNP per capita. Um, and for those without funding, that's supported by a research foundation that, which is linked to the, to the Frontiers uh, publishing company. Uh, so our company was founded by um, a number of South Africans as well as the, uh, the Europeans and Americans who. <laughs> Uh, who were founding members, and there's a lot of outreach to developing countries, scientists in developing countries, to encourage them to participate not only as authors but on the editorial boards. Um, and we make fee waivers available to them if they can't afford to pay uh, the article publishing fees. Uh, we're largely researcher focused, and we believe that the, all of the authors and, who submit papers to our journals have a uh, right to constructive feedback, so we don't reject out of hand. Uh, we always give a clear reasoning and we give them a chance to, to respond. Um, there are clear lines of accountability uh, in the peer review process and we try to encourage constructive peer review through a semi-open peer review process. I'll come back to that a little bit later. And we also promote uh, post-publication review and distillation and promotion through uh, an invitation to return for the top articles that are original research articles that we publish. Uh, I'll expand on that a bit later. We use a heavy degree of automation. Uh, and so editors and authors have direct control um, over the interaction during the review process and the editorial office gets out of the way as much as possible. And our time to publication, uh, because, of this, because of our dedicated editors and authors and reviewers, uh, is about 85 days from submission to decision. Add about a week to that for typesetting, we come in at an average of under 100 days from submission to publication on average. It can go longer, but sometimes it's very much shorter. Our editorial boards are constructed, uh, when we first started it was from the top down. So we recruited um, highly regarded scientists, uh, very high impact scientists to become our field chief editors for each of those journals you saw earlier. 
Uh, each one of those had at least one field chief editor, and they selected the specialties into which they would divide their journal, invite specialty chief editors, and then each of those specialty chief editors would invite associate editors who would actually handle the day-to-day -day operations of the editing process. Each of those associate editors would in turn invite about 10 or 15 reviewers, uh, and we would build an editorial, a complete editorial board for a field of about 2,000 to 3,000 field chief editors, specialty chief editors, associate chief editors, and review editors. Um, and this, is, this community was built from the top down at first. Uh, what we've seen now that people start, are starting to know Frontiers is that we're getting a lot more demand to come in at different levels. So people are coming to us and wanting to join the editorial boards at, as review editors, as associate editors, or they want to launch sections. So there have been a number of mutinies, um, I imagine, from uh, as part of this boycott, and we've, we've benefited from this uh, somewhat. We've seen a lot of people come to us and say, we think it's time for an open access option in this specialty or this field, and we'd like, you, we'd like for you to help us do this. The demographics of our editorial board reflect a broadly international group, um, still fairly heavily US and European focused, but there's a substantial um, and growing representation from Brazil, India, China, uh, South Africa, Mexico, and emerging scientific powers. Uh, we've got about 24,000 editors and reviewers in total on our boards, and they represent more than 80 countries. So the peer review, as I mentioned earlier, is based largely on technical merit, on as, uh, as objective a peer review as we can get. There's obviously going to have to be some flexibility because we can't get a purely objective peer review in science. Everything is some, somewhat subjective. Um, and on a unanimous decision to accept or reject. So we strive toward consensus. Even in the case when there's a rejection recommendation, authors are generally fairly understanding. Uh, the process has been such that there's a, they, even the authors are driven toward a consensus as to what needs to improve before a paper can be published. There are two steps, and this is where we differ substantially from traditional publishers. First is an independent review, a standard traditional review, and second is interactive. And in the independent review, we, asked, we ask specific questions in a detailed template so that reviewers have a guideline as to what, needs to what criteria need to be met in order for an article to be published. The interactive stage of the review resolves, resolves conflicts and allows for feedback and consensus building. And we try to drive toward a consensus decision to publish or reject. We identify reviewers who, the, we re release the identity of reviewers who endorse publication, um, and that not only encourages responsibility and accountability from the reviewers, but it recognizes their contribution to the process. So the way that our peer review process works, and this is one of our more unique um, innovations, is that when an author brings us a submission of a research paper, it goes first into independent review. And in this independent review, an editor makes a decision as to whether or not the paper needs to um, be held before it's sent out for review and improved, or whether it can be sent out for review. So if they give it a green check mark, it goes to two independent reviewers whose identities are hidden. This is still anonymous peer review in the traditional sense. Each of these reviewers gives an independent report, and the editor then chooses on the basis of that report what revisions might be necessary before the article is made publishable. This is where it goes into the interactive review, and Frontier's interactive review is an iterative process whereby, overseen by the editor, the authors and reviewers have a back and forth and they discuss any necessary changes or revisions to the paper. The, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the reviewers are still anonymous at this point. And so it looks, this is a figurative abstraction of it. Um, <clears throat> they can go back and forth and uh, everyone sees what everyone else is saying. So reviewers can see both reviews, authors can see both, and the editor can, can manage the whole, the whole thing and step in where necessary. It actually looks more like this, where the responses are a bit more substantial than you saw in the previous slide. <laughs> and they're threaded and they're quite detailed. And the reviewer identities are, the reviewers are identified as either reviewer two or reviewer one, or in the case that there are more reviewers, as three or four, et cetera. After interactive review, um, and this is how you get out of interactive review, is that the review editors are asked, is this paper publishable yet? And when they say that it is publishable, the editor then says, okay, great, publish. I've got two reviewers who say go, publish. The reviewer's identities are then revealed, 
and everyone is happy. It usually works out that way in any case. And you get your article published in Frontiers. This whole process um, from submission to reviewer assignment takes about five days. Then the ind independent and interactive review takes on average about 80 days. Uh, and the whole thing is done in under 100 days to publication and the uh, emergence of the article in published form on our website and in PDFs. And when an article is published, after publication, we monitor uh, abstract hits, full text, PDF downloads, a number of other demographics, including geographic distribution of the hits, referring sites, and we give all of this to the authors of the papers. So they can see where hits are coming from, where interest is coming from. Uh, they can see if users are logged into our website, what disciplines are following this paper or downloading it. Um, and time distribution of these hits and downloads and all of these impact analytics. We use these impact analytics then to promote post-publication the original research up to a next tier. So our first tier in Frontiers is the original research papers themselves. And the second tier is invited what we call focused reviews where an author is invited, the authors of the original research paper are invited back to write a contextual review around their original research where they expand on the work and what justified it and why it's important to their field. And these are, these are invited by the chief editor and all of the top 10% of original research papers in a given field are invited to the second tier. Um, from the, when, the, excuse me. This has turned out to be generally fairly popular as a, as a, as a model uh, for researchers and scientists. Um, and as you can see, we've gone from a fairly small number of submissions when we first launched, launched up to uh, about 1,600 in the first quarter of 2012. I like to point out to my colleagues that I was hired right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we expect this growth to continue fairly substantially, especially as we launch into new fields. Um, we originally started and published just under, under 200 articles in neuroscience in 2008. That grew into psychology and psychiatry, a very small number in 2009. And we expanded significantly in 2010 into the other fields that we now have represented within the Frontiers um, family. So our readership uh, seems to be growing fairly substantially in lockstep with the, uh, with the, the number of submissions, and in fa faster in some cases. We've got about 4 million page views a month. 500,000 unique visitors, and in total, since we launched, we've had hits from 200 countries, which was a surprise to me because I didn't even know that there were 200 countries. Uh, the next step for us, uh, and this is a recent uh, initiative on our part, is to launch research networking, uh, where we integrate a number of the features of Facebook and Google Plus and other uh, social networks that we like and apply them in a way that doesn't annoy scientists but actually uh, helps them a little bit and disseminates their research and allows them to build networks to collaborate with. So we give our researchers and our authors, editors, authors, everyone gets a profile on Frontiers by registering and either submitting or joining an editorial board. Uh, they get an activity feed on our research network so when they log in they see this. They see editing or authorial assignments on the right panel. Uh, they see their network, they see recommended people that they might know. They're automatically connected in their network to co-authors or to other members of their, edit their own editorial board. And they get impact analytics for their own profile as well. And their profile looks something like this. We give them impact analytics not only for their own profile, but also for uh, sharing on social media of their profile, of their work, of their articles, uh, and so on. And we're trying to integrate as much of that as possible to give them a holistic picture of uh, their research impact if they publish an article or if they edit a paper for Frontiers. We're heavily technology driven um, and we will remain so. So the editorial and review system that we've built is highly scalable and the journals are therefore highly scalable. It's very easy for us to launch a new journal. All we need is the people, motivated people, and all of the system is in place already. So we're quick to launch, and we're launching fast into a number of new fields. Uh, 
We have extensive alternative impact metrics, as I showed you, and we've recently added um, XML versions of all of the papers we've published uh, for text mining purposes, because we want to collaborate with as many people as possible and as many initiatives as possible on this. We recently integrated Altmetric, which is another digital science uh, initiative to track uh, social media and online media mentions of research. Uh, and we're going to integrate many more alternative metrics as we, as we grow. We integrate heavily with social media uh, in, in its existing forms, and we're planning to do more of that. And we are going to continue building our own research network, the Frontiers Research Network, which we, we like to say is our grassroots community-based network of Frontiers people. Um, it keeps our editors and our authors in touch, and it integrates author impact and article impact with uh, events, with organization pages, uh, with researcher profiles, and we have a blogging uh, facility on our website as well. So the basic idea behind this technology-driven platform is to re reinforce and facilitate the essential elements of peer review and of production quality um, in uh, peer-reviewed academic publishing, but to get ourselves, the publisher, out of the way and provide support where necessary, but give control of the process back to working scientists and working researchers. And that's pretty much it. I may have finished ahead of time, but I wanted to leave some time for questions. Yeah, I don't.